Good morning, I'm Frank Powers, and this is Lifestyle Tucson, the program where I speak to our neighbors, the people behind the scenes of our amazing organizations, small businesses, and nonprofits. Our friends are informing you how they serve our community, and they are here to give you updates on future projects. Let's make some furry friends today. Pima Animal Care Center is our community's only open admission shelter with the largest selection of adoptable dogs, cats, puppies, and kittens waiting to meet you. In fact, there's a critical kennel crisis going on right now, and you could find your new best friend microchipped, spayed, or neutered. Friends of PAC was founded in 2016 by a group of dedicated PAC staff, volunteers, and community members who knew that the newly renovated shelter would need tremendous philanthropic support to thrive. Their mission is that every pet served by Pima Animal Care Center is supported with the resources needed for a safe, healthy, and happy future. Tucson Subaru Pets of Pima Parade and Friends of Pack Festival celebrates the love between pets and humans, inviting community members across Tucson and Pima County to show off their cherished companions February 18th. People can participate with their pets of all shapes, sizes, and species, and hey, I'm a species, and I'm purring. Because today, I'm fortunate enough to speak with Tori Chisholm, Executive Director of Friends of Pima Animal Care Center, also known as Friends of Pack. Tori, welcome to Lifestyle Tucson. Yeah, well, thanks for having me. That's a pretty long intro. I'm talking about three things all at once, Yeah, it seems. well, you didn't leave me anything left to say, so <laughs> I guess we're done. <laughs> we'll call it here. Thanks for being here. But uh, it was a great pleasure to meet you when we met doing some news stories the other day, That's which right. was pretty funny because I do some fun things uh, for... KOLD or Fox 11 from time to time promoting this great event, and we'll talk about it in a little bit. But first, let's talk about PAC in general, then we'll talk about Friends of PAC and everything going on. So I gave a little bit of a history lesson. Tell me all about PAC, because it used to be called something else that you just told me, and that's what made me connect the dots. Well, it's funny. We were talking about names, and yeah, there was a time when it was known as Pima Animal Control Center. Um, obviously, our philosophy, the organization, and of the county has shifted quite a bit to where we focus more on the care, uh, less on the management. Well, not less, but a lot of management. But it really starts with building a community of care around the animals that we cherish, that enrich our community, enrich our lives. And so it's it's amazing work they do out at the shelter and in the community. Um, you know, give you some examples. They deal with about 18,000 animals a year, uh, have a 91% uh, plus live outcome rate, which is among the best of any large public shelter in the nation, uh, and just do incredible work. They're well, uh, nationally renowned for some of the innovative programs that they have that, that help either keep pets with the families that already love them or to help pets find new families um, and, and to provide care for uh, pets and their families in the community. So incredible amount of work. Uh, the Friends of Pack piece of it is we are their uh, fundraising partner, so we get to go out and and help generate additional support. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, our county has a great commitment to our animal companions, but there's only so much they can do. And that's where we get to step in. We get to do the things above and beyond what the county would normally be able to, to handle, to provide specialized medical care, to provide more direct involvement in preventative and proactive care across the community, doing a, a large things like that. And, and really, our goal is always to, to focus on what we can do is it's community-based care for animals. Uh, because the best thing we could ever do for any animal is to make sure it never ends up at the pack, shel pack shelter or any other shelter in town. And that's super important because uh, it really is that percentage rate that's so high that it's probably really due to Friends of Pack. You providing all that help and support to that organization is really keeping that percentage up, I bet. Well, there's definitely been some big jumps. Uh, we had the opportunity that the uh, county passed or the, the citizens of the county passed a bond referendum uh, you know, about a decade, a little over a decade ago now, to build a new animal shelter. That was a big part of it. But the reason Friends of Pack came into existence because people realized at the time that just having a nice, new, shiny shelter wasn't going to be the solution. You know, that we had to be able to provide services above and beyond uh, so that we could really um, give the animals in our community the care they we, that our citizens thought they deserved. So that's what we exist for. And uh, yeah, we, we know that we have a big impact on those life-saving and those numbers. And it's it's an interesting dynamic is, you know, when you get to kind of 90 percent and 90 percent live success rate is this. It's a bit of a mythical um, description for what they call no kill. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of groups measure it like when you get to 90 or higher. But 
when you get to that 90, every percentage point beyond that is just that much harder to achieve because then you're dealing with the most significant cases. As you mentioned, PAC's the only open admission shelter in our county. That also by default means it's kind of the trauma center. So if there's really animals with significant injuries that their their families are not able to take care of with at, at local vets, they a lot of times end with us. So if it's you know hit by car or other traumatic situations or or traumas that animals are going through. So in those situations, we're also dealing with just the hardest cases. Uh, we also end up having to deal with the hardest behavioral cases, you know, for animals that come in. So, so getting every additional percentage point to just save those more lives takes that much more effort and admittedly also takes that much more funding. And that's what we get to focus on. Well, and there is an easy way to focus on some of that funding because I was just going all over the website. And it's almost like you can donate to Friends of PAC and really just pick how you do it. The way you were talking about if a dog got hit by a car, I know there's one right there where you can help a dog that was hit by a car and like, let's get him some wheels. There's a cat on there right now that has, I believe has leukemia and a little mound on its foot. Mm -hmm. And that's a pet that you can help. And then there's all different ways you can support and donate for a specific thing. Do you want to help an older pet? You can donate to that. Do you want to help a different style of pet? You can donate to that. So all your tabs kind of have like a public interest for each one, which is fascinating because that's really important. People really only do donate about things they kind of care about a lot of the times, like things that affect them personally. Mm -hmm. We all kind of care about fighting cancer, but it's when someone in your family really gets it that now you do all the things, you go to the walks, you send the money, you do all that stuff. Everybody loves pets and some some love dogs, some love cats, but that's the point. You get to pick who you want to save, what you want to save, and that's really important. How much has that been like the biggest part of Friends of Pack? Well, I think it's definitely a big part of it. Um, you're exactly right. People contribute to stories or situations that resonate with them personally. And so, yeah, we have a lot of uh, dedicated advocates who really are passionate about our mature mutts because that's important to them. And so they want to be able to support that. Um, a lot of times if we have a, a particular medical uh, case that comes in and, and we put out a, an appeal to the public to help us fund the surgery for a particular animal, a lot of times for different people in the community, like the, the story of that animal or even the picture of the animal will resonate with you know, an animal they've had or an ex experience they've been through and they want to support that and they want to support it in others. So yeah, that's critically important. Uh, but also I, I cannot underlie for you how amazing our community is and it's just general love uh, of the pets and uh, and animals and how many people are so generous and just wanting to make sure that we have the funds that available to handle emergency type situations to, to handle you know particular cases when they come in yeah I see more about friends of pack than I do about pack that's the thing. And I think it's because is it because PAC's like a go more like a government run thing. That's the point. Isn't that how it is? Like the libraries. Yeah, I might disagree with you a little bit there. Okay. PAC has a tremendous social media following. We're very friends of PAC. We're jealous. I was like, how do we get so many people to follow us? Because people do. What's cool about PAC is what most people don't realize is how much the or that the center and the organization intersects in the lives of everyday you know, Tucsonians or, or Pima County residents, right? My joy is I get to go to events and I'll ta start talking to people and then they find out that I'm affiliated with PAC, you know, through Friends of PAC. And then they're telling me about how they adopted their cat from there. And then the person next to them, oh, I got my dog from there. And the person next to them, if it's a group of you know, five or six people, the next person is like, oh, my mom volunteers there. And like, it is so many people in this community have some form of direct connection. PAC has contributed to the lives of so many people in our community. And I get to help bring all that together and, and I get to help them remind them of those experiences. And then I get to help make sure that they those people can pay it forward as well and, and make sure that other families and other animals get to have those experiences that they benefited from. And because of that, PAC has a huge following and so many people are familiar with it. Um, and obviously we're fortunate because we also get to be part of that. But yeah, they have... They do a great job communicating about the animals and, and what the needs are. And then we pick up, Friends of Pack, we pick up from there and we focus on the specialized situations. Okay. Yeah. You're like the icing on the cake, really. Is that's what it is? Uh, yeah. I, um, I, I'm, I'm going to start thinking about that. Can I use that in my fundraising? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So it's, it's, an, it's a nice opportunity for us to, to be able to do the stuff and beyond. I guess 
In some organizations I've worked in the past, you might call it the margin of excellence, right? Okay. Um, you know, how much harder it is just to get better and better, right? And the, an organization can be at a certain place and it's the small things. And we get to, we get to make the small things that, that make the difference between being good and being great. That is, well, it is the small things. It's little, it's the little things that matter because those are the things that slip through the cracks. That's exactly right. That's where big, big organizations that really do have to do that emergency stuff that probably keeps them really busy and bogged down. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing that you guys can pick up that slack because that's really, you know, they, the devil's in the details. And that's why you get to really connect a lot of dots with all these other organizations. You get to be out and about and do a lot more to pick up that support. It's really just such a big deal to get the word out. And one of the words that I was really just shocked at is how much does it cost to get a pet adopted over at PAC? Well, it varies, but when we're in situations like now where we're overcrowded, overimpacted, uh, we tend to have a lot of programs where we'll waive the adoption fees. That's right. Yeah. So the only real cost is actually the licensing fee, which is uh, you know, $25. Yeah, that's and, pretty good. And uh, the animal is basically ready to go. And then if you're really savvy and you keep an eye out, we often run a lot of specials uh, through there where if someone adopts, we also they also get you know, like gift certificates to use at the, the we have a store right in, in PAC that's run by Central Pet that we're in partnership with as Friends of PAC. And so you have a chance that you can get like goodies there to, you know, take home and basically, you know, kind of leave there really ready with everything you need, you know, to take care of the, the animal that you've brought into your family. That's awesome. I saw that there was a link for a free coupon sometimes. That's an amazing way to do it too. You're always trying to help everybody hook them all up. And even that store, buy those toys local here and support Friends of Pack and Pack. That's a big thing to do is getting some of that stuff there right there on site. And that's a big deal. And another thing that you can do, oh, I don't know, why don't you come hang out at the big event coming on up February 18th? Because let's talk about it. Let's talk about the Tucson Subaru Pets of Pima Parade and Friends of Pack Festival on Sunday, February 18th, down near 4th Avenue. Is it going down 4th Avenue? I was watching video last year. Is it just in the area? Well, so uh, the first two years of the event, we were down 4th Avenue. We've grown a little bit too big, so we had to move it off fourth now we're utilizing sixth avenue which is a little bit wider mm -hmm. and then we turn on a seventh and the festival that we're having is all around fourth avenue okay so yeah so we uh, it's a little bit different route this year but it'll be a blast wider road better sight lines for spectators we don't have the wires over the top mm -hmm. because of the street car so we have some uh, higher like kind of activities that are happening so uh yeah this is our third year of this event i will tell you we started it. We thought this is going to be a fun event, and we know we we knew we needed a community event that celebrated PAC and then celebrated Friends of PAC. Just for the what I was talking about for the impact that PAC has had on this entire community, and we wanted a chance to celebrate that. And now to fast forward to where we are, and it's televised on Fox 11. We had 30,000 people come out to watch last year, thousands of participants, and we have so many in a giant festival with tons of events. Well, okay. Not exaggerate. Mm -hmm. Dozens of vendors. <laughs> uh, you know, so it's just been amazing how the way the community has responded uh, to this event uh, and to, frankly, the opportunity to, to show their love of animals. Yeah, it's a riot to see the video and to see some of the pets out there. Anytime I see a dog in a hat, my week is made, let alone my day. <laughs> but super fun things. There's costumes. There's a fun bunch of activities going on. There's going to be classic cars as well. There's costume characters walking around entertainers, fire trucks. That's going to be always fun to see climb around some of those. And it's not just cats and dogs, right? All pet types, including pigs, goats, reptiles, birds, and this term, pocket pets. I've never heard that term. I love it. I think that's what a Pokemon is, in fact. You know what? I like that. I can't guarantee we're going to have Pokemon. You okay. know, I, I, give me something to shoot for, right? But yeah, yeah. obviously we see all kinds, you know, whether it's guinea pigs, hamsters, you name it. The one thing I haven't seen yet is I haven't seen anybody walking down the street with a fish in a bowl. Oh, uh, that's a that's a goal. A goal for me. I like want to do. I've joked about doing that forever. I've drawn me doing. I'm a cartoonist. I've drawn me doing that because yeah. I had a goldfish. His name was Walker Mangold. The best name for a goldfish. I named it after the guy that sold it to me. Yeah. I go, what's your name? He goes, my name's Walker. I'm like, that's a perfect name for a fish. And instantly that was perfect. it. Right. So pretty fun. But that's a riot. Uh, let's make that happen. If I don't do it, somebody better do it. Put your, put your goldfish on a leash and take them on out there. That's the way to do it. Put them on a skateboard, and that's how you do it. So what a riot. Yeah, I love it. I love seeing uh, I love seeing some of our fun people in town that are 
reptile folks. Oh, yeah. There's nothing like a reptile person, right? They're a very specific type of person, very fun. I like bumping in them around town. It's fun. They're probably going to be out and about at this thing, too. Oh, yeah. So go meet some snakes. Go check out some cool things. I'm, I know there's a few bird people in town as well. Mm -hmm. I like to meet some of them. I bump into these people like Hotel Congress and stuff, too. Because, again, that's Tucson. They're just out and about. Yeah. One of my neighbors would take his tortoise for a walk, and then he's walking him back in a wagon because the tortoise just doesn't want to go back home. Oh, yeah, home. exactly. So they got to bring him home in a wagon. And that's what you might see at the, the parade, which is just, again, so fun and such a big deal. Uh, people can get involved in the parade to be in it. So how do they do? They go register online, and it's uh, – tell me how that all works out. Yeah, a couple of things uh, that – well, lots of ways to be involved, frankly. Um, you know, the, probably the funnest way is uh, to be in the parade and, like, get to walk with your pet in front of all these people and have a great time and all that – to do that, we ask people to go to the website. It's www.petsapimaparade.com. Pretty simple. Yeah. Uh, and register. They do. Uh, we do ask them to commit to donate or raise at least $50 in support of homeless and vulnerable animals and the projects that we support out at PAC. So we ask them to do that. And that's the whole goal of the event, right, is to, to raise awareness and support to help animals. They can do that. Plus, this year we have a wonderful uh, partnership with Main Event. They're actually making it so all kids with their families can be in free. So if it's just like, you know, a parent wants to sign up and, you know, they can sign up the kids to go with them. And then guess what? They get to bring the fur babies. And it's really, it is, makes it a, a family event for the entire family, you know, the four-legged ones included. So, yeah. So that's one way to get involved. And it's a blast. Obviously, people can come down and they can watch the parade. Uh, there's, they can watch anywhere they, they want along the parade route. If they want an elevated viewing experience, we do actually have a VIP deck at Corbett's this year. It's a great sight line. They're going to be food. They're doing specialty drinks. We'll have announcers right there. There's a performance area for the, the bands and the, the dance groups in the parade right in front. They're going to ha actually have TVs that will have uh, the live feed of the parade happening. It, it, it'll be an elevated like viewing experience for people who want that. And that is a, a ticketed event, but once, once again, you know, 100% of the ticket uh, goes to support homeless and vulnerable animals. That's right. Tucson's a walk up town, so uh, you've been warned. You might not get those tickets now. They're going to sell out fast. Very important people. I see lots of them around here. So that area is going to fill up. You want to get yourself a good seat so you can see everything. And again, it's a parade, and I just don't think that some people realize how big it is because even I, I used to live on 4th Avenue, and I love all the stuff that goes on around downtown. And I've heard of it. I didn't realize it gets 30,000 people out and about. Well, That's incredible. It, it happened fast. I mean, yeah, I, I'll did. tell you. So we conceived of this, and I felt like the first year of the, the event, I, I felt like I was like, when I was telling, like, when I was talking to sponsors about it or trying to get people to, I was tap dance. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. You know, like, just <laughs> like trying to explain to them because there was no video evidence of it. Right. And then year one, we had about 600 participants. We had a few thousand people come out to watch, but we had so many of those like unusual pets and the videos that came out of it were just amazing. And fortunately we were, uh, uh, Fox 11 was one of our media partners and they saw it and they're like, we want to put this on TV. This thing is so amazing. And all the other, sp our other sponsors who were part of it saw, they, they knew, they, they saw what the potential of it was going to be. Yeah. So then last year, just the visibility of it grew so significantly. And then like, hey, we, you know, the attendant, the participation grew, but the attendance just, I mean, blew up and, and people come out because our goal is to create at least three or four uh, wow moments, things that people are like, I can't believe I saw that. And, you know, they'll maybe always remember that they saw that there in that moment, right? And that's what makes a great event. And so our goal is to have three or four of those because you don't know what a wow moment for each individual person is going to be. So you do the best to create a multiple wow moments so you catch people's attentions. Yeah, that's called a flash bulb memory. Yes. That's right. Yeah. I, I, I base a lot of my stuff on that because, again, I'm a children's entertainer and I want to be the thing that stands out. A lot of when I interview adults, uh, when I was doing some of my research, everybody remembers the time when a special guest comes to school because mm -hmm. it disrupts the day. Yes. That's what it does. And they go, I remember the time that the skateboarders came to school, the yo-yo people came to school, like all that sort of stuff. And that's why, that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when a special guest shows up or a special event happens on a weekend, it's like, hey, guess what? We're going to go to this thing. You know, I love surprising kids with, some, hey, we're going to go see something today. Don't even tell them what it is. All of a sudden they show up and it's a, it's a, a pet parade, yeah. all these pet, that's insane to do. You can surprise kids with this event, all right? Or get them so amped up because there's so many activities to get involved in. 
But what other kids' style activities are there? Well, I mean, obviously, outside of the parade, the parade is like an hour, hour, 15 minutes. So yeah. It's a lot of great things to see. Kids will love it. But then we do have the Friends of Pack Festival afterwards. That runs until 2 o'clock. And there'll be all sorts of activities there. I mean, whether ranging from art to craft, face painting. I mean, we have a lot of sponsors who'll be giving out a lot of cool stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have live music and entertainment. There's costume contests for for uh, for uh, pets, and then also uh, we have the pinup for packs, which is a, you know kind of like a, a vintage style theme contest. Um, and so we have a lot of uh, amazing, wonderful things. We're partnered with Tucson Comic Con. Uh, they have a bunch of cosplay people that come out. So the the, the Dune Seed uh, group is in there, and they're yeah. marching. And you know, so you're just walking around, and all of a sudden you're taking pictures with stormtroopers That's and, right. and Siths. And <laughs> I don't know if I'd want a picture with the Sith, but okay. I know a lot of people would. Uh, so you know, Or princesses or whatever that is. And so, yeah, there's so many different things to be able to do even in the festival area. Mm -hmm. How many times have you done the festival part of it? Has that always been a part of it, or is that like kind of a newer addition? Uh, we started it last year. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So first year we did not. We had a little bit of stuff going on. We got a lot of feedback that with people would be really interested in that. So we started it last year. It went tremendously well. Um, you know, our feedback from last year is that people wanted more. They wanted to ask food trucks, and we have food trucks. And, you know, they want more stuff. So, yeah, it's uh, uh, it's going to be quite the day. Uh, it's It really is a blast. I I think the probably the most appropriate description I've ever come up with it for the overall event, it, it's the day that makes your your face hurt from smiling so much. Nice. Because no matter what's happening in your world, you see a bunch of dressed up animals. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. And then you, it's all I need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the and fact just, Tucson Comic Con's going to be there, it's not just a dog and a hat. It's dogs and capes now. <laughs> yeah, well, Cats and capes? Give me them capes. I can't wait. You know, I haven't seen crypto yet, but I'm waiting. Right? Like yes. someone just, but where are, where's crypto? Let's <laughs> yeah. get them out here. I want to see some super pets. That's so fun, and what a great event. And it is going to be Sunday, February 18th. Starts at 10 a.m. The festival goes till 2, you were saying, correct? Yep. So it's going to be fun. There's lots of fun things to do. And again, plenty of time to get ready for it and still get involved. If you want to walk in the parade, just go register on their website, which was, again, www.petsapimaparade.com. There you go. Now, before we even just wrap it up, we got about like five more minutes. People really do care about their pets in this town. Their family members. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and it's um, the passion I get to work with, with the people who care so much. Uh, it really is moving. Um, and, I mean, everybody has stories that I work with, has stories about how pets have changed their lives. I have those stories. That's why I do this job. And um, and those are the things that, that resonate with us, right? Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm blessed to work with people who care so much in a community uh, that is so passionate about taking care of the animals in our, in our midst. Again, you can go see a picture's worth a thousand words. I was going to say this. Go check out all these amazing people that worked at PAC, volunteers that came together to create Friends of PAC, and mm -hmm. just go look at our, what was it? Is it the life-saving team? Is that what you're called in the tab there? And everyone he is posed with a pet. Your picture looks fantastic, by the way. I love your shirt and that okay, photo. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> thanks for the flattery. And the, the, nobody's in studio. That shirt was all cool. He is rocking right now the coolest Bugs Bunny shirt I do that all I've right. seen. That's I do all good. right. Yes. But so. that's that's so fun. So go check out the website and go look at this great group of people, all their amazing pets. Go get involved. Go donate. Help some pets out. They're helping a lot of animals around town. And I do ask this from a lot of my guests. I feel like I know what your answer is going to be. But if you had one wish for your organization, what is that wish? Oh, boy, that's a tough question. Um, you know, our, our, our wish for every animal is for them to have the resources and support for a happy, healthy future. That's the only, you know, it's the, the most you could ask for. And if we could build to a community where we're, we feel like we're able to provide that for all the animals that are around us, then that's amazing. Yeah, that's so, a, it's yeah. a good wish. It's something we want to try. I think it's something we could do. And the best way to do it, go adopt someone. You need a new best friend, don't you? That's what the show's all about is friends. Go take care of that because today we made friends with Tori Chisholm, Executive Director at Friends of PAC, supporting Pima Animal Care Center and enhancing its efforts to save the lives of pets in need. Thank you for joining me today, Tori. Thanks for having me. This was Lifestyle Tucson. Bing, bong, bing. Time for a recap. What a good conversation about pets. I had a great time talking to Tori after we met while I was doing the news. It's fun to be a community guy out there talking to 
people running events, people running nonprofits, people doing all these small business things. It's great. So why don't you go out into the world, make some new friends, make friends with man's best friend and woman's best friend and everybody's best friend, pets at the Tucson Subaru Pets of Pima Parade and Friends of Pack Festival from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Sunday, February 18th. Go get all the details on the parade route location and uh, where you're going to want to go. For all that stuff over on the websites, I'll go through them right now. You got petsapimaparade.com. That one's easy. You want to get involved with Friends of Pack, go to friendsofpack.org. They're located at 5049 East Broadway Boulevard, or you can follow them over at Friends of Pack on Instagram. If you want to go check out what's going on at Pack, by the way, this is all with two C's because it's the Pima Animal Care Center, as we deduced, formerly the Control Center. So what used to be animal control, very terrifying sounding. Now, animal care. That's what you want. That's progress, folks. So PAC is located at 4000 North Silver Bell Road. And they are a government agency, like I was alluding to. So their website is www.pima.gov slash 2233 slash Pima dash animal dash care dash center dash P-A-C-C. Just Google it and you'll find it. No sweat there. That's what happens when you got these government websites. Uh, nothing's easy. Neither is their Instagram because it's at Pima underscore animal underscore care underscore center. Boy, what a fun time with the government, as always. <laughs> Even with pets, there's a few uh, extra hoops to jump through, which makes some sense. So I want to thank our new friends at Friends of Pack for joining me today. You've been listening to Lifestyle Tucson. If you're a nonprofit that would like to be on the show, email lifestyletucson at gmail.com. For more information about this program or to listen to something you may have missed, go to the Sunday Mornings page on klpx.com, kfma.com, mixfm.com, or espntucson.com. You can also subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, and Audible, or wherever fine podcasts are adopted. Follow on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Lifestyle Tucson, because I'm your BFF, your best Frank forever, Frank Powers, and Toot Toot Tucson. I love you the most.